Hello, Mr. Sakib. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Omar? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. So uh, we believe we are again with the same agenda of the corporate tax. Absolutely. Uh, that's more one of the uh, hottest topic, and uh, everyone is talking about it. So of course we have to be on it. Yes. So today we saw we we just sorted out from couple of last meetings with some professionals and with some corporations that there is a specific topic regarding the tax group. So there is a lot of question like what is the tax group? how we can how we can register a tax group what are the formulation for the tax group who can be a part of a tax group and who cannot be so there are a lot of things which we want to understand from you today uh, so thank you so much uh, for joining so uh, the, the the first and most important thing if you can brief a little bit about the tax group well i think we should just step back uh, before jumping into the tax group thing uh, we had uh, uh, multiple sessions where we discussed about uh, uh, the registration who needs to register who not uh, who is not, not allowed or maybe have the exemption from the registration of course uh, from mm-hmm. corporate tax mm-hmm. i think we just need to have a little bit uh, you know like a recap of uh, uh, that talk so basically there are three important categories i think uh, which, which has to be focused yes. of course the first category is uh, uh, a small and business small business relief which has been given to the sole proprietors or natural persons we talked about it uh, in the under, in our previous exactly. session so if your revenue is not exceeding 1 million dirhams technically and you are a sole proprietor mm-hmm. or a sole establishment mm-hmm. or a natural person mm-hmm. like freelancer mm-hmm. doing some work related to maybe uh, uh you know like media person or something like that mm-hmm. right and your revenue cumulatively in a taxable period does not exceed 1 million dirham so you have the exemption from registration of the corporate tax right so so from from this uh, uh, recap so we uh, what i understand there are two important things one is the revenue should not exceed revenue the income should not absolutely. exceed absolutely. 1 million dirham absolutely and the second important part that should be a sole establishment correct so it 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 will not fall under the partnerships absolutely. or the or the big companies the absolutely. corporations they are not fall under not limited category. to liability company no. llcs no other uh, formation uh, structures of mm-hmm. course mm-hmm. only sole establishment, sole establishment or sole proprietor companies of course and the top cap is a million, million dirhams absolutely okay perfect so 1 million dirhams that is the top uh, revenue if you exceed then of course you have to register but still there is another exemption being given to all the llcs and these kind of companies those who uh, and their revenue is not exceeding 3 million dirhams in a taxable period so they can actually enjoy a relief for 3 years of course right for a consecutive 3 years okay. now that relief was related to only re- revenue if your revenue does not exceed 3 million dirhams in a taxable period of 12 months of course so so let me let me rephrase it uh, let me point to point uh, uh, what i understand from that thing mm. so if the revenue is 3 million dirham for consecutive 3 years so a company can say we fall under the sme program and we uh, we we are we are eligible let's have an example actually very quick example so if if the revenue is like 2.5 million right and you know the uh, corporate tax calculation uh, is assume it's 2000, 2023 correct and it's uh, 2.5 what you're saying no not to, of course the taxable period let's just say let's take an example of the taxable period so that people can understand it quickly if your company is llc let's say okay maybe in a mainland or free zone doesn't matter for now and uh, if we are actually uh, like a llc company and the revenue is let's say 2.5 million and the financial period opted is starting from 1st january till 31st of december okay. so the first taxable period would be 2024 which will be 1st jan 2024 till 31st december 2024 and then they will have like 9 months uh, in the later period uh, maybe like uh, in uh, of course in uh, 2025 till the end of uh, september 2025 so they during that period they have to file the return right so talking about the financial period of 2024 or the taxable period of 2024 2024 you had the revenue of 2.5 million which is not more than 3 million dirhams of course but still you have to register yes correct yes you registered but now you are trying to calculate your corporate tax liability at the end of your financial period your corporate tax liability let's say uh, was 150000 dirhams and how it happened because you are maybe you earned the net profits of let's say uh you know like uh, 525000 dirhams out of that 375000 dirhams is uh, 0% that is exempt and the remaining or anything over and above will be calculated at 9% now you have a tax liability correct but you have a relief because your revenue did not exceed 3 million dirhams so you will not pay that corporate tax liability okay perfectly fine so if it is 
so so according what you have explained if it is persistence for the next year for 2025 december the return will get due by the end of 30th december 2025 if still it's under 3 million if it is for under the whole million, year for, for the, the uh, sorry for, for the taxable period for you the mentioned the taxable period, period. Correct, yeah. so it will be again a zero a zero and if the for the third year it will again under 3 million uh, let's just say let's assume in third taxable period the uh, form uh, the company's liability was there of course in first year second year but they did not pay because you, their revenue was not uh, more than 3 million dirhams but in third year their re- their revenue actually kind of exceeded 3 million dirhams then it becomes payable for the first year second year and third year as well okay. if there was any liability it is a retrospective effect retrospective as well. effect absolutely yes if if any of if the a- any one of the years you exceed 3 million dirhams so you have to pay the previous years liability as well clearly got you so so here i have a question uh, before we jumped into the next thing here i have a question so the first thing less than 1 million and uh, sole proprietor absolutely second thing less than 3 million we are talking about the revenue and uh, uh, you elected yourself as an sme under the sme relief you will get 0% but right. in both of the cases one is not registering even under right. 1 million is not registering if you are a sole provider and your revenue is not under 3 million, million you have to register you have Absolutely. to file your return but you can say Absolutely. we we elected ourselves as under the sme program that's correct so the important thing here so how how the things will be certified that okay this specific document or this specific thing will allow you to present to anybody that look we are under 1 million or look we are under 3 million i think uh, if you are under 1 million so the most important or maybe under 3 million in any case the most important part is the uh, the calculation of your corporate tax liability mm-hmm. and that will uh, be done through the proper books of accounts being maintained of course because the guidelines are very clear about calculating the corporate tax liability there are multiple things which you have to consider before actually calculating your corporate tax liability mm-hmm. now it is a self assessment type of a criteria right because you are assessing your own books and then you are actually disclosing to your uh, authority in the good faith of course you have to make sure that you are cal- calculating as per the guidelines your revenue is not exceeding 1 million dirhams and there are some exceptions as well that you have to focus right before calculating you cannot make uh, certain items as part of your revenue that also you need to consider and then after calculating you actually see that yes 1 million dirhams is the top line and i have not exceeded 1 million dirhams so of course you cannot you should not register at all voluntarily i'm not sure maybe some exceptions so for example if you act uh, you know like if you sort of uh, elect to be you know, you know filing the return following the returns and you know like paying the corporate tax liability so you can actually do that as well even if your revenue is not exceeding 3 million dirhams but you act, you know like sort of elect to uh, you know like file the uh, corporate tax return and pay the liability so of course you can do that as well there are certain reasons of doing that because there are companies they might have some operations within the uae or some some might have outside the uae so they'll prefer to pay the liability within the uae to save uh, some money maybe they are trying to combine their income here they are permanent establishment here they are combined uh, their incomes around the world within the uae then definitely there are some exceptional criteria but as you asked that what is the most important document that is basically your final 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 accounts but that has to be of course you need to maintain your financial accounts you need to maintain your financial uh, statements audited financial statements are much important document it will become in the future even though it is not uh, mandatory for in certain cases but but the important thing is this uh, here we are looking that f- to record the books of accounts we have to follow the rules and regulation which the which the tax authority have introduced under the corporate tax scheme absolutely so in this corporate tax scheme so if whether whatever the scenario is to prove that one 1 million or 3 million or whatsoever so we have to follow all the rules of corporate tax no absolutely uh, the, once it is implemented mm-hmm. which is like since 1st june 2023 mm-hmm. so you have to you have to start following the exact rules set by the government so, of course so the recording of the uh, books of accounts it will be in line with the tax rules absolutely it has to be so there is no exception in a, in a nutshell even businesses like small smes like us mm. they have to have a professional Absolutely. accountant with Absolutely. them without that it is impossible now and you know that we've been talking to a lot of uh, uh, sme uh, yeah. guys and the owners of smes and they are literally they are not certain about how they are going to manage their books of accounts they are maintaining their data literally on uh, on excel sheets they are not uh, using any uh, books of accounts because they they have the impression of uh, accountant being a cost center 
which is i think uh, technically now it is now it will be it will be a different uh, scenario now because when you will have the right accounting accounting team on your side so you'll definitely save a lot of money maybe uh, for paying any penalties in the in the future you might actually be able to calculate the right amounts you might be able to uh, you'll be definitely able to uh, manage your books of accounts in the rightful way or guidelines so of course it is there now what the first question you asked when we started the talk that was corporate tax group now when you have for example uh, multiple companies you have uh, uh, you know like related parties uh, you have multiple companies in the, within the mainland or outside the mainland maybe in free zone in a designated free zone or non designated free zone so yes they have actually given you some reliefs over there as well but you have to be certain about that how you are going to actually create a tax group or how you are actually create a qualifying group now both things are actually different let's talk about the tax group first if you have multiple companies or more than one company or which is like 2 3 4 or any number so we are talking about company inside the uae within the uae within the uae okay absolutely so the tax group can be created but there has to be a certain relationship of parent and subsidiary and the minimum percentage is has to be like 95% so if you're uh, so one of the companies please please sorry sure. to, sorry to interrupt you so what is meant by 95% So ninety five percent shareholding has to be held by one parent company and the so group let, line. So let, let let's have an example here. Yeah. There is a company A, correct, which is the parent company. Correct, absolutely. And there is a company B, C, and D. So there are three more companies. Mm. So A is a parent company mm. who are having the shareholding in company B. Correct. Let's say ninety five percent. Correct. In C, fifteen percent. Mm. and in d let's a 68% right so how we can formulate a group in this so the group can only scenario? be formulated one when you have the parent subsidiary relationship with the holding of 95% minimum so in that particular scenario only the company b hmm. will be able to get a tax group with company a because the rest c That's and d right. i mention you like 15 and 68% percent. they can become a tax group with some other company where they are actually uh, if they the are having the corporate if they have the 95% corporate, uh, corporate tax exactly but this is this is regarding the corporate ownership or it's implemented same with the individuals let's say if a single person on multiple companies let's say i own five companies right. and i'm 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 having the 100% so share if you have the 100% share holding so that uh-huh. means you can actually certain certain about creating a tax group now if we go back and see that how it can be done uh, Th- that's very clear uh, the parent company both the parent company and subsidiaries must be the residual juridical persons have the financial year and prepare their financial statements using the same accounting st- standards so there has to be some common criteria one there has to be a parent and subsidiary relationship within the companies if there is no then there is n- it can become a qualifying group but it cannot be a tax group so right? uh, but because the parent subsidiary group it means the parent company have the rights Uh, which it maybe. can exercise over exactly. the sub- sub- subsidiary Absolutely. so 95% so major... share holding number 1 uh-huh. 95% of the voting rights uh-huh. it could be another way of uh, checking that how 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 much influential you are basically in con- controlling the uh, subsidiary regarding the so 95% is the major okay. criteria but okay. now on the other okay. hand there has to be commonalities if there are if the, if the common financial statements are ma- not maintained number 1 if you're not following the same standards of accounting standards if you're not actually following the same financial period or taxable period so you cannot actually create a tax group so okay. for example if your parent has a tax uh, financial period of 1st jan to 31st december and your subsidiary has a different financial period Let's from say that june to july june to july so you cannot actually create a tax group over there so it has to Sorry, be the common Ju- july to june 